Hello and welcome to Dear Franny, the podcast of uncommon conversations about love. I'm your host, Francesca Hoagie. Hey, thank you so much for listening. I love having you here. It's just means a lot to me. (laughs) So I, uh, I wanted to talk today about dating and I was thinking about this. I actually, I have a client right now who asked me this question a couple weeks ago about a situation that she's dealing with a guy that she'd been dating. And she said, well, what would you do? And honestly, that's a really basic question, but it is not a question that I get asked very often. Usually I'm asked, what should I do? but not what would you do? And often the difference, there is a difference between those two answers. And the difference might be that I'll just explain what I came up with. And I think that'll explain the difference. So I decided to think about dating today in this moment, in this COVID-19 moment through this lens of what would I do if I was single right now and I was really committed to meeting someone, and this is a state that I can relate and remember being in, what would I do? How would I go about finding that person? And so the reason that my advice, and I'm going to share with you exactly what I would do, because I came up with 10 steps, and there's actually probably some more that I could come up with if I really pushed myself, but these are the 10 things that I think I would very easily, comfortably do simultaneously. Now, I would not say to the average person who asks me, what should I do to meet someone right now? Oh, do these 10 things because it's going to depend on, you know, what are their love goals? What is their confidence level? What is their dating experience? And, you know, how proactive are they? How much do they fear rejection? You know, there's so many things that I have to take into account as a coach when I'm working with someone because it's not helpful for me to just tell people exactly what I would do because I am at a different stage in my love journey than they are. All of that is say that I'm just going to tell you what I would do. There have been times in my life where these suggestions would have been way too much or just not where I was like in terms of my skill level or my comfort, my confidence, my self-love, but this is what I would do. This is legitimately what I would do. Okay. So hopefully you can find some inspiration from these action steps and maybe you'll take on one or two or three or four of them that you might not have otherwise taken on. And that is all awesome and exciting. And I'm going to tell you in a second, (laughs) all this prologue. The other thing is that you have to understand that my mindset about love is that the love that I want is possible for me. And my job is to take the actions that I can take to open myself up to that happening. So that's just been my mindset for a long time. So that's why I can think of doing all these things and this is something that feels comfortable for me. So again, hopefully you can get a little bit of inspiration or maybe you'd be like, oh, hell yes, I'm gonna do all 10 of those things. That sounds great. Number one, I would get on a traditional dating site like an OkCupid or Match, but OkCupid is probably the one that I would choose. And the reason is because I've just used OkCupid in the past. I've had a good experience there. I've also had good experience on Match, but OkCupid, you know, it's very left leaning. They've really leaned into the political side of things. So it's an app that appears appeals to people who are politically liberal. It's an app that has appeal for people who are college educated. Not that it is everything that's the most important thing, but you know, I am, and that tends to be somewhat of a common ground when it comes to dating. I've been on OkCupid in the past. I've had a good experience there. And I also really like the questions that they ask on OkCupid because those are really interesting. So that's my choice is OkCupid. But the reason I would get on a traditional dating site is because you have more opportunity to write about yourself, to express yourself, what you're looking for. You know, you don't have the super tiny bios like you do on dating apps. You actually get to say something about yourself in, you know, a few paragraphs. And then also you have more control because you can run searches, you can, you know, target, you can specify people in in particular areas, people that meet particular criteria. Now people can go overboard with this, but this isn't about what other people would do. (laughs) What I would do is I would be open within my parameters. So I would be on a traditional dating site. And then And the second thing I do is I'd also be on a dating app. So I would be on an app, most likely Bumble. And the reason that I would be on an app as well is because there are people who are, you know, they're great catches and they may not feel inspired to go through the process of like signing up for an OkCupid where they have to fill out all this information and they have to pay to subscribe and all of that. But they might get on an app because the bar to entry is lower on an app. So there's a downside to having that lower bar of entry, but but the upside is that you get people who are just, who they might still be really serious. They might be really amazing matches, but they're just on the app because that's the easiest thing. So I wouldn't want to miss out on those people. So I'd be on one of each.
each and just two. And I should also say I would be on Bumble and OkCupid and no more. And if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I, I don't know if I could do two. I'm only on one or I maybe only be on one, that's fine. I have the bandwidth to be on two. I don't recommend that anyone be on more than two, but if you have the bandwidth, then two is a good option. So the third thing that I would do is I would start flirting on Twitter. I would be in the comments. I would be like, you know, paying attention. Like right now, I don't, when I'm interacting with people on Twitter, I don't like pay super attention to like, I mean, I might check out their profile just out of curiosity. Like, you know, what do they do? What do they care about? But I'm, I'm not looking to date, but I would have my dating lens on and that would change it. And then I'd be like, okay, well, you know, here's a guy who looks smart or interesting, or I like what he has to say. Let me see like if I can get any cues about his life and his status, but I would absolutely just be interacting, making friends with. And if I saw that there was some promise and somebody was reciprocating in that interaction with me, then I would totally not hesitate to slide into their DMs, which is, by the way, what happened with me and my boyfriend. We met in person, but only briefly. And after our encounter, I cyberstalked him, (laughs) found him on Twitter and slid into his DMs. And that's how we came to be together. So I've already done this. And that case was even more extreme because I had to go through the effort of actually looking him up on Twitter. Whereas if you're meeting on Twitter to begin with, then obviously, you know, you've taken that out of the equation. Okay. And then the next thing I would do is I would turn my video on. Like, so when I go, on Zooms and I've been on all kinds of Zooms in the last five months and you probably have as well. And I even something like a yoga class, like I'll get on virtual yoga classes and lots of people have their video on, but I just typically don't because I'm like, nobody needs to see me practicing yoga in my house. Like it's fine. But if I was single, I probably would have my video on and I would be paying attention to who else had their video on, right? I've done like seminars and talks and things like that and workshops via Zoom. Again, if I was single, I would make sure my video was on. I make sure I had some lighting on me that looks good. I would maybe even put on a pair of earrings or a little bit of mascara. These are things that I don't currently do, but I would if I was single because you just never know. And then this is about courting serendipity. Another thing I would do, the fifth thing that I would do is that I would find groups on Facebook that were interesting to me. So like, for instance, I'm really into plants. I've got a lot of plants, dozens and dozens of plants, right? And so I'm in a group on Facebook that's for plant parents. (laughs) And I'm not in that group dating, but if I was, if I was single, I would be paying attention. Okay, well, who are the guys in the group? What do they have to say? What can I find out about them by clicking on their profiles? Maybe someone is single and maybe there's somebody that I could connect with. You know, I'm not, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook anymore, but if I was single, I would certainly find some groups to spend some time in and see who else is in there. And another thing you can do on Facebook, I didn't put this in the blog post, but another thing you can do is you can pay attention to your friends of friends and see if there's anyone who, you know, you come across on Facebook who you have a mutual friend with, a friend in common with, who maybe could introduce you. Okay, that's another thing that I actually have done that in the past and it worked in the short term. I mean, we didn't end up together, but I I actually did meet someone that way. Okay, number six, I would tell my friends that I'm open to introductions. And this sounds so basic, but honestly, you know, as a matchmaker, one of the things that I used to do, and I don't matchmake anymore, but I used to, one of the things that I used to do, and I used to do this with my coaching clients as well, actually. I don't do this piece anymore, but I used to in my earlier days of coaching where I would still solicit feedback from the friends and the family of my clients. And I would have that feedback like given to me directly, you know, unfiltered as a way to just get a more objective picture of what was going on with the client so I could help them more effectively. And I can't tell you how many times. So this is a client who's paying me money. They're paying me their good money. They are reaching out to these people to say, hey, I'm working with this matchmaker or this coach. And, you know, can you please email her your answer? These I had a few questions that I would have them answer about the client. So these are people who they have chosen, right? These are people who are close to them, know them well. Can't tell you how many times I would get these emails from people. They'd be like, wow, I had no idea Susan was so serious about, I had no idea. I thought she was perfectly happy being single. I mean, I didn't know it was that serious, right? And I can't tell you how many times I heard that. And I'm like, these are people who are really close to you and you are serious enough about meeting someone that you actually hired a professional to help you to do that, which is awesome. But like even the people who are closest to them don't know that they are that committed to meeting someone. So that is a missed opportunity. You 
sometimes I know it's hard to, you can feel some shame, you can feel some embarrassment. You know, you don't want to highlight the fact that you're single. You don't want to highlight the fact that you're looking for love because that might feel, you know, triggering to you or make you feel thirsty or desperate or any of those things. But listen, your desire for love, connection and intimacy, that makes you human. Everybody has it. Everybody who's in a relationship has it. We all have that within us, right? So it's nothing to be ashamed of. And the fact that you are single and you haven't yet met that person or found that relationship is nothing to be ashamed of. Like this is your timing. This is your journey. Better you be single and being very intentional about who you are getting in a relationship with than you just fall into a relationship with the first person who you can, who you meet just for the sake of being in a relationship. And then you find yourself in something that may be very unsatisfying. And I talked to people who are in that situation too, right? Who say, I've been with this person for five years, 10 years, 15 years, and I can't do this anymore, right? And it's much harder, especially if you're a person who really likes to work on yourself and grow and to learn more about yourself. And if you're listening to this, then you that is you. It's much easier to do this work and to start to get a deeper awareness of what really matters to you while you're single. It's much harder to do that in a relationship because if your partner is not on the same page in terms of that growth mindset, and going deeper, then that's a very lonely journey because you can't pull them along with you because they're on their own path. So anyway, all this is to say, don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed to talk about being single. And I certainly would make sure that the people who are closest to me in my life, that they knew that I was serious about meeting someone, I was open to that happening because you never know where that might lead. Okay, and then I would also tell them that I'm open to introduction. So that's the other thing. I would tell them I'm single. I'd be like, hey, I'm open. So my approach to dating is a very open one. I trust the people in my life who I care about. That They're not going to set me up with someone who is insanely bad. <laughs> so I just know that I can find common ground and that, you know, meeting someone new is just, there's value in that experience. So I would be really open to introductions and I would tell my friends that. The seventh thing that I would do, similar to Twitter, I would flirt and Instagram live, I would be up in those Instagram lives. And you know, whether it's like DJ D nice, or it's a talk or, or somebody that I follow, who's like, just really interesting. And they're talking or interviewing someone. I watch a lot of Instagram lives and I do them myself. If you're not aware, follow me on Instagram at dear Franny. I do a live every Monday. They're lots of fun, <laughs> but I would be in those comments and I would see like, okay, who's that person? Who's that person? It's just like keeping your eyes peeled, checking people out and not being a afraid to interact with somebody who seems interesting to you. Eighth thing that I would do is that I would organize socially distanced outdoor gatherings with my friends. So I would be like, hey guys, let's do a picnic in the park. We can set our blankets, you know, six feet apart. Let's go to the beach. Let's figure out, I mean, I don't mini golf, but like I would, I might now, I mean, I would be really creative about it, investigating what can I do just to be more social because right now I don't see many people at all other than my boyfriend and that's fine. But if I was single, that wouldn't be fine. If I was single, I would want to be out there and engaging with more people. And then the ninth thing that I would do is that I would be talking on this podcast about being single. I would talk about like, you know, who I want to meet. I would just be putting that out into the universe. I would be letting people know, you know, I would be blogging about being single probably. Like I did that many years ago. I had a blog that was a dating advice blog that I also talked about my own dating life. So again, I would be putting it out there because you never know who's going to come across and be like, hey, well, you're single. I'm interested, right? Or like, oh, you're single. You've got to meet my friend XYZ. And then the last thing that I would do, and if you've been listening to me for a while or you know me, you know that I'm a huge, 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 huge advocate of eye contact. Eye contact is the foundation of flirting. It is so important. So many connections are sparked in a moment just by that eye contact. It is a skill and is an important one. And I would be practicing because in the olden days and the before the pre-pandemic times, you can always accompany that eye contact with a smile, right? Which you should be doing if you're flirting. And now that we wear masks when we're outside, this is more challenging, but I would be so focused on becoming like an incredible smizer. So you all know what smizing is, right? Tyra Banks uh, taught us how to smize. That's when you smile with your eyes. So I would be like, my job right now is to learn how to smize 
real, real, real well. <laughs> so if I'm out somewhere, I don't care if it's the supermarket. I don't care if it's the street where I'm walking. That's where I met my boyfriend the first time, by the way, on the street. I would be paying attention to who else is around me and I would be practicing that smizing. So those are the 10 things that I would be doing if I was single right now to meet someone. So hopefully, and real quick, I'd be on a traditional dating site. I would be on a dating app. I would be on Twitter flirting. I would be on Zooms with my video on looking kind of cute, but not too cute because, you know, everybody knows you're still home all day. So I don't want to get all dolled up. That's not my style, but just a little, just a little, a little something. I would join Facebook groups that interested me and I would interact with people there. I would tell my friends that I'm single, that I'm looking and that I'm open to introductions. I would also be on Instagram live on the Instagram lives that I joined. I would be paying attention to else was on there and I would be open to flirting and interacting in the comments. I would also organize socially distanced outdoor gatherings with my friends and also tell them to invite other people if that's possible and safe. And then I would also be talking on this podcast. I would be blogging about being single. I'd probably post on social about being single, just putting it out there like, hey, I'm single. And actually one of my friends, my matchmaking BFF, Amy Doran just posted this on Facebook. She's single at the moment and she posted about it. And I'm like, that's perfect because now my wheels are turning. I'm like, yes, Amy single again. Who's worthy of Amy? Who's the guy who I want to introduce Amy to? So now I'm thinking about her and her love life because she was open and vulnerable enough to share that. And then lastly, I would practice my eye contact everywhere I went. I would be getting so good at smizing, so good at smizing that I could see other people smizing in response to my smizing. That would be my goal. So like I said at the top of the show, I know that these are not suggestions or action steps that everyone is going to be comfortable taking, but maybe you can get a little bit of inspiration, whether you want to adopt any of these steps or whether you maybe are, you know, you're inspired to think of some other kind of out of the box step of your own, but love is really important and you deserve to have it. And I would not put my desire for love, connection, intimacy, companionship, I would not put that on hold indefinitely because of the pandemic, because this pandemic is going to be going on for a long time. So how can you still connect with people and be safe and really be open and really get to know someone, let them really know you? How can you push yourself to do those things more and more? That's what my focus would be. So Like I said, I hope you get some inspiration from this. I thank you so, so much for listening. And I really invite you to stay in touch with me. As I mentioned, I am at Dear Franny on Instagram, where I'm doing Instagram lives on Mondays, where it's a QA and a And it's also, I do Oracle card readings. I pull people on camera and I've been doing those for a few weeks and they are so much fun. I really, really love doing them. So I invite you to join me at Dear Franny on Instagram. And the podcast is at Dear Franny any podcast. And so, you know, I'm going to be doing some merch giveaways soon because I have some amazing merch, which you can check out at dearfrannyshop.com. And thank you to those of you who have rated the podcast. I appreciate you. Thank you for your five-star reviews and for your written reviews and for subscribing. So please, if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and just, you know, that tap those five stars. I really, really appreciate it. And Lastly, please feel free to text me. So this is a US number. This is going to count like a text message. So whatever your data plan is, be mindful of that. A text to the US if you're outside the US. If you're in the US, then um, you're probably okay, but still your regular messaging rates will apply. 323-402-6863, 323-402-6863. Text me and uh, join my text group there. And um, I I don't text every day, but every few days I send you guys a message and you can text me directly via that number. And uh, yeah, let's stay connected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. And I mean that in a gender neutral way. (laughs) Have a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. Stay safe. Bye.